So I talked about different symmetries that Ampere's Law is really good with. We finished the infinitely long straight wire. There is, of course, the infinitely long solenoid, which I'll refer you to the textbook. And the third one is this toroid thing. A toroid is basically a solenoid that we curl around on itself, which ends up looking like a donut. Let's say in this case at the inside, the current comes out of the page and outside goes in, then it comes out and in, etc, etc, all the way around. So if we cut it across, you see kind of like a cross section that looks like this. The inside has a bunch of current going into the page. I mean, there's 500 turns here. I'm not going to draw a 500 circle, but... And then there's an equivalent number of current that goes into the page like that. And hopefully in this plane, you can appreciate that if we take a point somewhere in the middle here, if we draw a quote unquote Amperian loop, which is a closed loop, you can see that we're enclosing a whole bunch of current that comes straight out of the page. So therefore, we're going to get my magnetic field in the same direction as given by the right hand rule. And because of the symmetry, they must all be the same around the circle because it's the same radius away. That's basically the bulk of it. The slight variation that can happen is the cross section of it. Instead of cutting it in the middle of the plane, we cut it across like that, make that cut face. You might imagine that these loops are actual circles. So there's the one coming out here, coming down there. And then as you loop around on the other side, it looks like that. So this is a case where you have a circular cross section, which basically makes the thing looks like, you know, if you go to a donut shop, you can get these old fashioned donuts. That's how that looks like. That's the shape of a toroid with a circular cross section. When you bite into it, you can find that the cross section here is circular. But that's not the case here. We have a square cross section. So instead of two circles, we have two squares. So this would be more similar to, say, the other types of donuts that are more full. Like even though from on top it looks like a circle, just like that, if you cut it in half like that, you'll see that the ends of it is more like a square because it puffs up and it's fully filled. Mmm, donuts. Okay, back to back to physics. What is important then, let's look at the question. They want the magnetic field right at the center. So the only real question is how big is this circle that we're drawing? Well, they refer to this here as the inner radius, which is 0.25 meters. And then they're saying that the cross section itself has a, this guy is not drawn to scale, <laughs> three centimeters by three centimeters. So to get to the middle, that's going to be one and a half centimeters. So from the center, it's going to be 0 0.265 meters. And that's the radius I'm working with. Could you imagine having to do slice and dice for this problem? But of course we know better, we have Ampere's Law. The line integral again becomes trivial in the sense that the magnetic field goes along the loop, parallel to the loop, and has the same magnitude because of symmetry. Where R of course is the distance from the center to the point which we're interested in, which is my 26 and a half centimeters, mu naught. In terms of current enclosed, well, we're enclosing every one of these current that goes out of the page and not including all the stuff that are outside of that that's into the page. But there's many, many wires, right? They say there's 500 turns and you're grabbing all 500 of it. So it's going to be your total N multiplied by the current of each wire. So while the direction is very predictable. It all swirls around in a circle, concentric circle all the way around all the time. The thing to note is in a toroid, the field is not exactly uniform. It also has this one over R dependence. 
but people like this shape for other reason. One of them being, if you go outside the toroid, as soon as you go outside the toroid, and you make a loop like that, you know that you're enclosing zero current because every positive current is cancelled out by a negative current. So therefore outside the toroid there's no magnetic field. That's an advantage of the toroid. In any case, uh, we can quickly work out the magnitude of the magnetic field by subbing in numbers 500 times 2 amps all over my and since we're using amperes, meters, etc., we know that we'll end up getting Tesla. And the number works out a small 755 micro Tesla. Even though it looks a little weird to begin with, and it's not maybe a shape you're super familiar with, the math itself is quite easy.